Welcome back to Vault Hunters 118. In the last episode, we unlocked this awesome little flower right here, the Entropinium, who will eat explosions and turn it into mana. And in this episode, I want to automate Entropinium mana productions to produce a ton of mana. Now, I also suggested in the last episode that you needed, like, uh, the modular routers to automate it, and you can use modular routers to automate it, but you don't, you don't need it at all. It's actually really easy to do with a uh, repeater and a redstone torch. So I'm not actually that worried about it. Uh, I think we're just going to do it with the vanilla stuff. And for starters, I'm going to take down our endo flame system because we really don't need it. Oh, I don't have my Paxel. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are the only uh, vanilla components that we're actually going to need. We are going to need something called a mana detector. Uh, which is this guy very easy to set up it's really cool by the way so this setup is super duper easy you're gonna have your mana detector between your mana spreader and your mana pool and just make sure it's connected okay perfect good 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 you want to make sure it's going into your mana pool the mana detector is a really neat little guy that will put off a redstone signal uh every time it has a mana pulse comes through it uh and so we are going to use that with a redstone torch on the side of the block to power a dispenser that will dispense a piece of TNT right next to the entropinium. And then here we will put a redstone block uh, to power the TNT as it's placed down. And that's it. That's how you automate it. <laughs> yep. It is pretty easy. Oh, why did that? There we go. Yeah, please face into the spreader. Yeah. Ooh, rain. Hi. Uh, yeah, that is, that is it. I'm pretty sure. Um, let's show it off. I'll bring out some TNT. We're going to start like simple, right? I'll place down a piece of TNT, All right? It's going to go off. Blammo. And you'll see, okay, we need to up the delay. There we go. Up the delay to three ticks and it'll turn on once the mana comes all the way out of the spreader, right? You'll see, you see the spreader's going. The entropinium's going. That's going to empty. This guy's just got to empty itself as it fills up the pool. And there we go. What this does is it means that TNT is only going to disperse when the entropinium and the spreader are absolutely ready to receive TNT, which is very, very, very important. Now, I want to increase the efficiency of this because it's really slow right now. There is a better mana spreader called an elven mana spreader, but that requires a uh, terra steel. And we are going to try to get into terra steel this episode, but I'd rather use lenses to speed this up. And that is going to be a lens of potency to send more mana at once, as well as a lens of velocity to send the mana faster. Now, a potency lens requires a rune of fire and a velocity lens requires a rune of air. So we are going to have to do that. And both of them require a mana lens, which is just some mana steel ingots and glass. So it's all pretty cheap. And I'm just going to craft them up. Uh, and you might be saying, whoa, you could put more than one lens on a spreader. Uh, kind of. I'll show you how. Alrighty, those are our runes put together. I'm going to make two mana lenses. Oop, I'm going to mess up making two mana lenses. And then we can make our potency and our velocity and all we have to do to stick them together is put one slime ball that's all it takes and you can get a composite lens of velocity and potency super duper cool right click your guy and you can see it actually goes right on so now it's going to send more mana and even faster velocity is not that big of a deal because it's right next to it but it's always good to make the composite ones so now you can see when this tnt explodes this guy is going to flash a lot more frequently in fact there we go. Now it only needs a two tick delay or a one to whatever, whatever that tick delay is. It went through a lot faster. Okay. That's the point I'm making. So and this is the dangerous part. I could put the TNT in here, place it on the ground to jumpstart the system. It'll explode. Right. And it's not going to place another TNT until the entropinium is empty. There we go. And then the mana spreader needs to empty out as well. All right, that's probably empty. There you go. You can right click it to check and the entropinium eats up the TNT and this will go as long as it's loaded and as long as it has TNT. This is a pretty small like area. I think I, I feel like I did a good job here. I'm proud of this. Now, what would be really powerful is I could make multiple of these systems 
and put them in something called a mana battery. And a mana battery is a clever little thing where mana pools distribute their mana to each other. But for that, you need sparks. Uh, sparks are not that hard to make. You can see some Laramar blaze lanterns and gold and a few petals. But what makes them really good is these spark augments, especially the dominant spark augment, which needs this weird little guy, Pixie Dust, which requires opening a portal to an elven, uh, to Alfheim, I think it's called, which requires Terra Steel. Terra Steel is a heck of a guy. First of all, you need all these wacky materials and a lot of mana. A ton of mana, which is a where this little entropinium is going to be helping us out with. So to even get started with Terra Steel, you need this Terra Steel or Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate, which is going to require a block of mana steel. That's a ton of mana. Lapis, which isn't so bad, but you're also going to need a rune of fire, a rune of air, a rune of mana, a rune of earth, and a rune of water. So I have a little bit of crafting to do. Oh, and a rune of mana is another tier one rune. It just requires a mana pearl, which is an ender pearl. Uh, I think it's an Ender Pearl. Oh, I thought it might have been a Bounty Pearl for a second. Because um, uh, this is Vault Hunters. They would do that to you. I hope this is enough mana to even turn 14 of these. Ooh, just barely. Ooh, yeah, okay. This is expensive. Uh-oh. We don't have enough mana to make the uh, Mana Steel. I forgot this thing did three Mana Steel. Well, now we wait. While we wait, I got a suggestion that you can apparently decorate the floor of your Kajurium stuff and to put blue wool on the bottom of the fish ones so it kind of looks like they're in the water. <laughs> they still look dead, but uh, at least they look like they're swimming around. Well, the proper fish look fine and uh, the squids... Squids look ominous. Another suggestion I got actually had to do with making these illusion blocks turning them into an illusion chest. Uh, oh, I need four. F oh, oh, I see. I see. Okay. Well, I guess it wasn't expressly to make an illusion chest, but it was to make um, the frame chest down here look like a pressurized reaction chamber because I mentioned I was feeling a little sad that I didn't get that pressurized reaction chamber look. And I was reminded uh, by someone asking if I can make the chest look like a pressurized reaction chamber that, uh, yeah, I could. The only thing is, um, it'll be a very expensive craft because you need a pressurized reaction chamber for it. So, can I even make this right now? Uh, you know what? It's a great suggestion, but I don't want to use a lot of Laramar and 4 Chromatic Steel on it. But, uh, maybe one day, maybe one day. But for now, we're gonna just, uh, where did the, where did the block go? For now, we'll just cover it up like this because I forgot how expensive those were but uh, I could with this illusion chest um it looks like the whole like uh, model of the block rather than just a texture and lastly I was reminded to feed some of my cats who have been hit by the pillagers nasty nasty pillagers there we go and now I can create the last two mana steel ingots I need toss those in there and create the final room that we need boop Awesome, a possum. So with a terra steel block, we can now make the terrestrial agglomeration plate, but we're not done yet. There's a bit of a ritual pedestal you actually have to make with living rock and a cross like this and lapis. Oh, come on now. I can, I can place between the lines. Lapis there and the agglomeration plate there. And the last thing we need is actually one of those sparks I was talking about. No augment needed, so. A little bit of blaze lanterns and get that in there and spark. So this goes on to the agglomeration plate and it is now ready for terrestrial agglomeration. That being said, we're probably going to need a whole lot. Well, no, not probably. We are going to need a whole lot more mana before we do that. And the cost of Terra Steel is not exactly a small one. Not only do you need a Mana Diamond, Mana Steel, and Mana Pearl, but you also need a Vault Diamond and a Chromatic Steel. Now, we can put these items on the pedestal and they won't despawn, but I'd rather generate a bunch of mana and then come back to it. Though I should probably make these items first, just to make sure, you know, we don't want to fill this guy up and then realize we still have to wait to make these three. So, we've got our mana-made items, and uh, now it's just a waiting game. I figure while we're waiting, we could run a vault, and I have a bounty to complete a hunt the guardians, so why don't we get that nice orangey portal up, and we will spec our hunter into observer. This is going to be a speedrun vault. 
Okay, my goal here is to complete this vault as fast as possible. Why? Because we get a black chromatic steel from it, and um, I've never really tried a speedrun vault. All right, let's see if we can do this. Oh, yes, it's a void theme. Oh, well, that's perfect. And two, oh my gosh, a two times plentiful and prismatic. Mmm, mm, it's tempting me, but I'm not going to do it. We are going to be vault speedrunners. Is that an obelisk right off the bat? Nope. All right, that's fine. But having three obelisks is actually super useful because that makes obviously doing a speedrun vault very easy. I'm going to drop that to the Enderman won't follow me. And you know what? As an added challenge, I'm still going to just talk to you guys randomly while I do this vault run. So uh, about the package I mentioned last episode, you know, UPS kept telling me it was arriving one day. It wouldn't arrive that day. Yada, yada, yada. Right. It was a big pain in my butt. Um, I kept waiting for a package to arrive that didn't arrive. They kept showing up with items that weren't for me. Uh, <laughs> and it arrived yesterday, except it didn't because the company I ordered from <laughs> sent me the wrong item, which was just devastating. I mean, it was very funny. Okay. It was very funny. At least I got a really good laugh out of it, but oh my gosh, it was just like, no, I want my thing. But the company was great. I called them up. I said, hey, I'm feeling a little frustrated that I didn't get the item I ordered. Especially because the item I ordered was like four times the cost of the item I got. Um, but uh, they, they were very good about it. They were like, we're really sorry about that. We're going to send you the real one immediately. And you go ahead and keep the item we sent you. Which is fine because it's a cool item. Oh, Editor Joseph, turn up the gat here. Turn up the uh, gamma on this vault because it is a void vault and these guys are invisible even to me oh well they're all going down all right buds whoa all right one last guy just checking he's not in any void liquid okay beautiful um i feel like i'm legally obligated to mine the ore pois up there come on it's two times plentiful I, I said i said speed run but it's like right there it's in front of my face okay it'll be quick i'll be quick i'll be so quick oh great ah, i hate hitting someone while on ghost walk you should just be able to do no damage in Ghost Walk, okay? They should just remove that ability. It's so frustrating to, like, go into Ghost Walk and then something jumps in front of you. Be quiet, Enderman. You are loud and annoying. All right, that's fine. I got the, I got the, they got the important stuff. Let's go, let's go. I gotta make up for lost time. Well, this is also a pretty good time to say that, uh, if you remember, I posted a poll on what pack I should run alongside of Vault Hunters, and I added a third option in that pack, in that poll, of like other, you know, oh, what other thing do you want to see if there was interest for other mod packs? And there kind of were, but the most votes went to create Astral and all the mods 8. And I don't think it's very fair to the people who voted on um, other pack not to have a voice in what we play next. Um, oh, I am out of mana. Is there draining on this? I guess not. Okay, would you stop that, sir? But in any case, I I've posted another poll that'll go up right as this video does. There's also going to be a poll in the Discord uh, for the members of the Discord to vote on as well, so I could get their responses too. Uh, Discord link is in the description. You know what to do. It's a fun place. YouTuber plug done. But yeah, I'd really like to get your feedback on, on between all the mods 8 and Create Astral, which pack you would like to see alongside Vault Hunters. Don't worry, Vault Hunters isn't ending. I have no intention to end the Vault Hunters anytime soon. Uh, it's always when I want to do a different thing than vaulting that I get stuff like ornate castles. Well, get out of here, Enderman. You're annoying me. You know, vault objectives cannot spawn in these rooms, but like, why not? You know, I, I they used to be able to spawn in special rooms in 116. I'm not sure why they removed the ability to do it in 118. I guess it's because like the room is supposed to be focused or whatnot, but I think it'd be a really fun, like stressful situation, right? Like. You have all your scavenger items, there's almost no time left on the clock, and the only altar you have access to at the moment is in a challenge room. So you have to, like, fight off hordes of enemies in the challenge room while you're trying to, like, frantically get all of your stuff in order. That just sounds, like, fun. I mean, it sounds stressful, but it sounds, like, really entertaining, you know? I know normally the rule is we have to do X mark rooms, but, like... <sighs> this one we're skipping. There we go. Obelisk number two. Thank you, thank you. Okay, that's the last one of those guys. One more obelisk. One more obelisk. Oh, and there's the last obelisk. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, well, I feel like we definitely could have gone a little faster had there been, you know, more obelisks in our path. 
we have reached the end of our speedrun vault. I really would love to get an augment from this. There we go! Now give me an augment, because I was so cool and I completed it in like seven minutes, which is not that fast, but you know, it, it's A speed. I didn't even touch a chest. Just a little bit, a little bit of ores, because you have to. You have to grab the echo. And there's our bounty complete. I forgot we were doing that for a bounty. <laughs> All right, hoping for an augment. Let's see, do we get one? Nope, but we do get an artifact. I will take an artifact. Should I, should I make you guys wait for the artifact? Should I just go back to Batania stuff? Nah, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not that cruel. Uh, ooh, it is a new one. That brings us to seven artifacts. Also, that is a very pretty artifact. I like how that looks. Seven artifacts. Did I put that in the right spot? No, that didn't match up at all. Oh, I didn't check how long that, <laughs> I didn't check how long that vault took us. Uh, we had 18 minutes. Well, how much time did I spend in it? Eight and a half minutes. Jeez. Ugh. That was terrible. As a side note, uh, don't trunk load these and, uh, turn them off before going into a vault. Yeah. Okay. Well, we have half a mana pool of mana and in the last season that was enough to do Terra Steel. So maybe, you know, maybe it's enough, right? So, gonna use that same trick to pull everything we need for the Terra Steel, and I love that trick, okay? That is an incredible, incredible trick. Uh... Oh, you need a spark on the mana pool, too. How super silly of me. Okay, you go on the mana pool. Now there should be a connection between the two. Awesome, awesome. You can right-click on them with a wand to see if there's a connection. And bloop, 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 bloop. No, stop it with that. Stop it with that, okay. Okay, you don't want to interrupt the ritual because it will take mana, okay? It will take mana away if you interrupt the ritual, so be careful with magnets. Now, back up. Oh, they're not on the plate. Why are you being difficult with me today? Bloop, 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 bloop. Back up. Yes, there we go. Okay, you can see it is pulling out mana at a ridiculously fast rate. And it is, it's got this cool animation, and as long as this is going on, your items won't despawn. So you can just leave them here. Um... Maybe that was enough, right? Nope, nope, the orbs are going out again. Okay, the orbs gotta do a little bit of a dance. I'm thinking maybe half a pool really wasn't enough. Unless, unless, come on, come on, they're green. It's right there. It's right there. This is tantalizingly close. It's like a dollar bill on a fishing hook in front of me or a carrot on a stick in front of a pig, I, I suppose is the Minecraft reference. They're touching it. They're on it. It's like, they're green. It's right there. Unless, of course, they're about to come outwards again. And it really is an entire thing of mana. But uh, why would it be? Oh, no, they are coming back out. No. <laughs> no, we're only halfway. <laughs> well, for the meantime, we'll get our entrepinium set up. Or our, our um, what are these guys called? Endo flames. Look at the endo flame set up back running. There we go. Okay, now more than one of them is is making me mana. Where'd the items go? No. No, they desp- What? No, they're not supposed to despawn! Oh. Okay, there goes my mana. I'm a cute little flower guy. I'm a cute little Batania flower man. This is... This is relaxing flower magic okay well while we wait to get all of our mana back i'll uh we'll do some mechanism stuff okay only a little only a little don't freak out don't worry we're not gonna go like crazy mode on the mechanism stuff i'm just thinking we could probably use uh some polonium and polonium is super easy we just need to make another one of these solar neutron activators which honestly just means we need elite control circuits a little bit more hdpe and some reinforced alloy ba -ba 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 -ba. to do any mechanism stuff as always we need a bejesus amount of laramar so why not two stacks of the stuff it didn't double ugh. 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 Uh, but the process to getting that sweet sweet polonium is actually really easy you have your solar Neutron activator, right on here, uh, and uh, you pump nuclear waste, which is in these guys. Oh, well, there's no more nuclear waste in these guys because they they eat it. They made it all go away. But uh, you pump it into these guys. What? Oh, probably need to pull it like that. 
And uh, I should grab my configurator. Don't worry, I'm not going to keep these as the green ones. There we go. Much prettier. And I think if I use the configurator to set this guy to push, hopefully it will prioritize going into the solar neutron activator instead of into the nuclear waste barrels. And then to actually refine our polonium into polonium pellets is also very simple. We just need a uh, another pressurized reaction chamber and I believe to deal with the additional waste that it will produce, we can just put more of these waste barrels um, because it will produce some more nuclear waste. I know this looks ugly, but... Uh, oh, into the lava. Okay. But I don't mind it looking uh, ugly. I am just going to use these green pipes to filter water into the uh, pressurized reaction chamber. I don't think it has to be anything fancy. And the last thing we need for this guy is fluorite dust. As you can imagine, fluorite dust is painfully easy to make. You just get a crusher and you fill it with, well, fluorite. So there you go. A little bit of fluorite in there. Uh, I know this is cramped, but I don't care because I don't really have to look at it. There we go. Fluorite's going right on in there. And then the last thing we need is uh, some nuclear waste flowing. Okay, as always, backup of the world is here, and we are going to boom, activate. Oh, this guy starts to spin in. Energy starts to flow in. But the big thing is that the nuclear waste is also a flow in. Please be going into the solar neutron activator. No, it's prioritizing this barrel here. Oh! And for some reason, that made it prioritize this? What? Okay. All right, we're making polonium now, right? Yeah, look at that. Polonium. Yeah, that's very radioactive. Maybe I'll break another one of these just so that it, it doesn't look like it's prioritizing. It looks like it's dispersing. So if I do that, will we get more in here more frequently, maybe? Uh, I don't know. But look at that polonium go. Well... That's why we make backups. I broke one of the barrels, and uh, if I didn't back up my world, this would be permanent. All right. Alternate timeline D JoJo here, and after getting everything built back up, we are all good. No more mishaps. Activate the reactor. Everything starts spinning, but most importantly, all of our nuclear waste is going to go into our solar neutron activator. Good, and it doesn't overload it, right? Okay, cool. So we could just have this guy going at this rate and it will fill this guy up with polonium much faster. Okay, as we hit a thousand millibuckets of the stuff, there we go. It's going to turn our fluorite dust into a polonium pellet and produce some spent nuclear waste. That spent nuclear waste is, I believe, a gas that we need to output on the top. Yep, there it goes, and it will go into our radioactive waste barrels and very slowly decay. Uh... Every four of these, I think, makes a single fusion reactor. Uh, yeah, every one of them makes a fusion reactor casing, but we need four to start. Hmm, this is going to take a very long time with the size of reactor we have. That being said, it's all chunk loaded, so it should still be running right now with absolutely no issues. <sighs> all that's left to do is wait for mana for the Terra Steel. So, uh, on you go, buddy. Okay, finally. That took ages. That took absolutely forever to do. But we finally have all of the mana we need to make a Terra Steel ingot. And this should go very fast because we have a whole mana pool already. Come on now, let's see it. All right, the orbs are doing their little dance. They're going to kind of, that bed, they're going to come in. They're going to be green now. Or turn green, don't they turn green at some point? Oh, here we go. They're greenifying. All right, we're about halfway through. That's where we got to last time. There we go. Okay, they're going to touch again. They're probably going to dance outwards again. Yep, there they go. Oh, man, that was so much mana. All down the drain. Well, not down the drain. Terra Steel. Terra Steel is good. Come on now. Yes, yes, and we have a little bit left to spare. Woohoo! Terra Steel ingot. And immediately we're going to break that down into a Terra Steel nugget because we want to make the Elven 
gateway core and this is going to unlock some uh more high tier botania stuff for us which will be really super duper uber cool but i don't think i'm gonna do anything with this episode because to be perfectly honest things have been weird ever since that world reset <laughs>